Hi, I want to welcome everyone again to another demo on Creo Parametric. Today we're going to look at solid modeling and some of the basic solid modeling features and functions you can use inside of Creo Parametric. Once again, we're going to use the 777 race car model as the basis for creating our solid geometry. Now, in one of our previous examples, we actually created a sketch in the sketcher mode of Creo Parametric. So we're going to start off using that as an example. So in this case, we're going to use extrude. We're going to use the external technique of creating an external sketch first, which we already did, and then selecting the extrude tool to create our solid feature. So I could either pre-select the actual sketch and then select extrude, or you can start extrude and then select the sketch. Either method you'll see the actual solid geometry start to be extruded away from the original sketch. Now, some things that are new in Creo, you have a drag handle. I can actually drag this sketch and see it actually react with surrounding geometry as I'm pushing and pulling this actual sketch. You can also just double click the dimension, changing the dimensional value. Now, some things you'll notice that are different with this tool and several other tools are there are additional commands functions inside of this. So inside of the extrude tool I have the ability to now add a taper. Before you'd have to actually go out and add a draft but now I can add this internally and you're going to see this as well in some of the other functions as we move forward. You can also add a second side. So maybe I'll say side 2 goes in the opposite direction a given distance or another distance. So you can add two different directions totally independent of each other if you choose. In this example we're just going to go with one direction. Now, another method is if you didn't have the sketch, you start your feature tool and then create what's called an internal sketch. Now, we have another video covering internal and external sketches, what's similar and what's different, but, and I'll cover that in another, again in another demo, but let's go into creating the internal and external sketch. Now, some of you may realize and recognize previously of how you actually started and created this using this method. Selecting the extrude tool, you can right click and define the internal sketch, selecting your surface, and picking your references and choosing sketch. Seems pretty quick, seems pretty knowledgeable, but several extra clicks and there's a quicker way now. Um, so what I'm going to do is cancel where I was at, go back to where I originally was, and instead of starting the tool, what I'm going to do is what's called seeding the surface. I'm going to select the surface that I would like to create the extrude on choosing it first, then starting the extrude tool. Now again, when I'm seeding the surface, I'm holding the Alt key before I select the surface. And what it does, all in one step, it starts the extrude, creates the internal sketch on that surface, aligns it to a reference plane, and then sends me right into sketcher mode. So I don't have to spend time with extra clicks, extra mouse movement. Again, an easier way uh, putting tools in your hands to actually create things intelligently quicker um, and again very easy to use. So what I'm going now is just showcasing again a lot of the right click functionality in this case choosing references. Now what I would like to do in this example is use existing geometry. I covered this in the sketch demo but I'm also going to cover it here so I want to offset the outlying sketch of this extrusion we just created and what I'll do is choose a loop and then I'm just going to offset this in the direction that I'm creating and I've created a loop and with my sketcher tools turned on in this case showing me it's a closed loop if it's shaded I've actually created this so now I can exit sketcher mode and what I now have is similar to what I had before but there's one variance one difference since I'm pulling and pushing this solid extrusion back into another solid I can actually have it reverse and start to be a cut, removing material. And you're seeing that react with the surrounding geometry as you push and pull this solid entity through another solid entity. So this can be changed. You don't have to have this on. This is just an option for this actual type of, uh, in this case, extrusion. Now maybe I like this extrude back to a specific surface. So I'll just say extrude this back to this surface, make it a cut, and complete the command. So very easily, very quickly, I'm able to use existing geometry, constrain that geometry through constraints, through dimensions, or reuse those, and then be able to add material or remove material really quick, really on the fly, very easy, very flexible to use um, inside of Creo Parametric. Now another tool is creating ribs. Let's say I'd like to create a trajectory rib across the surface. 
kind of the example of the two that are already here, but I would like one to go parallel or, or perpendicular between the uh, two existing ones. So the trajectory rib is going to be very similar uh, in functionality of what we just did in internal options inside of that rib itself. So again, I just chose the surface, created the sketch on that surface, and like I did before, a lot of commands at my right click, I can choose now, in this case, various elements for references. Now references I'm just choosing in this case so I can have my sketch references where I'd like to sketch my line to. Now I'm not going to spend too much time in this case defining where this line actually sits. I could change the dimension, but what I'm doing now is capturing intent by locking that line coincident to those edge points. So I know my rib will select both of those. Now with the rib um, sketch part portion created, I now see the rib. And again, I have grip handles. I can drag the width or I can key in the numeric value. But you also have additional commands inside of the rib tool. And I'll showcase this on the dashboard at the top. Maybe I would like to add a draft. And now I can change the numeric value of the draft or I can grab the draft handle and simply drag this to create a draft. Maybe you would like to create internal and external rounds. I have the ability to create those external rounds and also maybe internal rounds. I can make them the same or I can specify different values for each individual round itself within this rib. And then complete the tool and I've created a rib, not only the rib itself, but with the draft and with a round. And then I can come back in and apply other rounds around the surface area of the existing geometry that's currently created. Now another tool we would look at is hole, the hole tool. And several ways you can create a hole on surfaces, on rounded areas, um, and then you choose different references. So again, I'm just going to pick anywhere on this curve to create the hole itself. And I have various actual handles that appear. Some are green, some are uh, white in this case. And these are for references. So I can create references when I'm creating this hole. So one reference in this case is the degree angle on the side, where I would like that placed. Another one is a linear dimension from the end in. How far in do I want to create this hole? And then finally, I have one for the diameter of the hole and one for my depth of my hole. Well, in this case, I'm just going to change the numeric value on the toolbar, in this case the dashboard on the top, and I'll make the actual hole depth to select or to the next actual surface. So it only goes through the outside. Now you could, if I wanted to, put a conical point on this if it was, let's say, not going through everything. I could also make this threaded. So maybe there's a certain class of thread that I would like to use for this hole in this example. Maybe I would also like to have a counter bore or maybe a counter sink on this hole. And again, I can see this information on the shape tab, changing the numeric values here or on the screen. Also, you can have a note. I can pull this note information, display it right now actually in the 3D model, or I could display it in my 2D drawing sheets when I go to, to actually create my orthographic projections. So in either of these methods, very, very uh, intuitive, very, uh, very flexible on how to use. Now, let's say you want to create a pattern of this, several tools to create patterns. One, you can create a pattern of the actual feature itself, or maybe I can create a pattern of the geometry. In this case, since we have a feature, I'm just going to create a pattern of the feature, and I can go in multiple directions. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to create three entities, uh, maybe 0.5 units apart, going across this actual shape itself. And then it'll create those three holes in this example. Now, as the holes are created, I'll see I have reference geometry, in this case, datums already placed in those holes. And I can always create them at another point, too, if I wanted to. And one of the other tools we were going to look at is revolve and what the revolve command can do. Very similar to the extrude tool of adding and removing material. Now, in this example, I already created a sketch that's already sitting inside of this actual shape, little circle that's over here on the right. And we're going to use the Revolve tool for that. So I'm going to start Revolve. I'm going to choose my sketch. And because the sketch doesn't have an internal center line, I'll define it just by clicking it. And now I see the Revolve, in this case the revolution being created. And just like before, I'm adding material as I drag around. But one thing you'll notice, if I reverse the direction, it will either add material or it will remove material. So just like the extrude tool, you do have an option to add material and to remove material as you drag this around. 
Now, a variety of ways you can actually have this uh, being revolved. You can say, I want to go maybe 180 degrees, uh, maybe I want to go in two directions, or maybe I want to go to a given plane or a given surface. So you have a variety of ways you can actually create the revolve in this case uh, as you're pulling and dragging this around the actual shape. So in this example here, I remove material. And then one other final tool is rounds. You can create rounds of a variety of ways on surfaces, on edges, on flats, uh, or I can do maybe an entire round on a rounded surface. In the round tool itself, um, several options that allow us to go from surface to edge, edge to surface, uh, of the various rounds that I want to create. So maybe I want to go from surface to surface. And it's going to create a round, and again, I have drag handles. So I can interactively see the round being created before I actually place it. So these are just a, some of the actual tools you can actually use to create, in this case, standard geometry um, using some of the solid modeling tools inside of Creo Parametric. Um, again, uh, very flexible, very easy to use, um, and very, uh, very intuitive. Thank you.